Application of Worf, How to Get Better Performance. I'm going to talk about some concerns and considerations for best practice of Worf. Worf is a well-tested and well-documented modeling system. It can be run by people who have no experience. However, correct configuration and reasonable selections of physics and dynamics options are still necessary for successful application of WORF. Before we start to design a numerical experiment for the case we are concerned, we need to first conduct a thorough analysis of the research topic. For example, what conclusions have already been reached? What scientific questions have not been answered yet? What processes are important in the case we are concerned? After the analysis, we can get a clear picture what to do with WORF and how WORF simulations can help in our study. The model configuration includes several important components. First, where the model domain should be located and what resolution is appropriate. Another important issue is how to produce initial condition and later forcing data. And of course, the physical and dynamical options. With so many options available in WORF, how to decide which options are better for the case we are concerned. All these issues need to be con considered when we set up a numerical experiment. First, let's take a look at the domain selection. The model should be large enough to allow the development of model physics and dynamics over the interior of the model domain. Otherwise, the results will be affected by the forcing data. The literal boundaries of the model should be located at less complex terrain area and also avoid steep topography. The literal boundaries must be away from the area of interest. This is a good example to demonstrate the impact of the model domain on simulation results. This plot displays two 12-hour simulations of wind speed at 250 millibar. Uh, these results are from ETA model. Everything is the same for the two simulations. The only difference between them is the domain size. The left panel is from the simulation over a large size domain and the right one is, the from, is from the simulation of a small domain. A strong, narrow jet stream was simulated on the large size domain, which is more realistic. However, in the left panel for the small domain simulation, the feature was significantly smoothed. This smoothed result is attributed to the influence of the large-scale forcing, which propagates into the regional model domain. This is a typical case that illustrates the impact of model domain on the, mod on the simulation. These results are from the ETA model, but we know that the similar, the similar phenomena can be found for WORF2. Initialization is an important issue in both regional and global simulations. Many, many model problems actually arise from poor initial conditions. In general, the initial condition is more significant, is more important for a simulation of a few days, but later boundary condition is more important for longer simulations appropriate initial time and the quality of input data, including the surface information, are typical issues we need to consider. Next, I will give some examples to demonstrate the 
importance of the initial and the boundary conditions. This is an experiment conducted by EPA for air quality study over Houston area. In the urban area of Houston, EPA created a 9 arc second resolution data set to describe the urban surface characteristics, which includes impervious fraction, with and without consideration of the impervious fraction they found large differences in surface temperature simulation, which subsequently, subsequently affects simulation of ozone and other chemical species. This is an example to demonstrate that correct representat representation of land surface features is important for the model simulation. This figure shows the results of worth 3 km convective runs conducted in Anka. This study aims to investigate the diurnal cycle of precipitation and the possible impacts of model initial time. The model domain is located at central US. The blue lines show the model results using the GFS data as the forcing. The only difference between the upper two panels is the initial time. For the left panel, the model was initialized at 0 UTC. The model takes time to spin up. Convection can be well simulated 24 hours later after the initial time. For the right panel, the model was initialized at 12 UTC. Convection developed rapidly and strongly. This is probably because the initial condition may already include convective information. As a result, the model is well spinned up after 12 hours and the precipitation was well simulated since then. These results indicate that the initial time also has great impact on the model simulation. Literal boundary condition. Literal boundary condition always imposes a basic limitation to work simulation. Boundary errors can be caused by interpolation. Also, certain errors may already exist in the forcing field. These errors can be transmitted to WORF domain and affect the model simulation. Here I list general rules how to minimize the negative impact of literal boundary forcing on WORF simulation. First, strong forcing should be avoided at literal boundaries. Second, the horizontal and vertical resolutions of the forcing data should be as close as possible to the resolution of WORF. The boundary update should be as frequent as possible. When running a nest case, interactive boundary should be used when possible. This is an example that shows how the lateral boundary condition can affect the model simulation. This is a large LIDA case with periodic and non-periodic lateral boundaries. The left panel shows the results with periodic lateral boundary. In this case, after the initial spin-up time, realistic ID structures develop and uh, are advocated throughout the model domain. The right panel shows the results with non-periodic lateral boundary. In this case, turbulent structures don't exist in the inflow boundary. The model area close to the inflow boundary remains ID deficient. As a result, the simulated ID stru structure is unreasonable. Now let's take a look at the grid size and its impact on model simulation. 
the grid size should not should be determined based on the specific case we are concerned. Next, I will discuss some general guidelines for the determination of grid interval and the related physics options. 3 km is the traditional cloud resolving resolution. There is no need to turn on cumulus scheme and this resolution. 30 meters is the resolution for large eddy simulation. There is no need to turn on planetary boundary layer scheme and this resolution. Large eddies can be explicitly simulated. For grid intervals between 100 meters and 1 kilometer, PBR scheme is still needed in most cases. Shallow convection can be resolved if the grid interval is smaller than 500 meters. The monotonic advection scheme will help to mitigate errors associated with terrain following coordinate. This is an example of Wolf simulation of a derecho case. In this case, the Southern Storm Complex raised from Illinois to Delaware, Delaware Coast in 12 hours. Wind gusts topped 80 miles per hour in many spots. We use this case to demonstrate the impact of model resolution. Wolf is run at 3 km and 15 km resolution to simulate this case. The upper panel is hourly radar reflectivity based, based on observations of NOAA, which shows the development and evolution of the convective system. The bottom panel is the Wolf simulation at 3 km resolution. The model was initialized at 12 UTC. At this resolution, the thunderstorm complex can be well simulated. Note that this is a code start run, and no data assimilation is conducted. The simulation agrees well with observations. These two figures display the maximum wind speed simulated by WORF at 15 km and 3 km resolutions, respectively. The simulation at 3 km resolution can well reproduce the observed wind gusts. In contrast, the simulation at 15 km resolution severely underestimated the wind speed. This case study with different resolutions illustrates the importance of model resolution. The ritual is a standard storm complex with many small-scale structures. High-resolution simulation can better represent these small, detailed feature features. About the model levels and the model top, we suggest that at least 30 or more levels should be specified if the model top is higher above 50 millibar. For a model top cl close to 1 millibar, 60 or more levels should be used. If the model top is above 30 millibar, then we need to select RTMG or CAM radiation schemes. This is because ozone radiation effect, effect becomes important above this level. RTMG and CAM radiation schemes consider the ozone effect. Note that the vertical grid, in, grid distance should not be larger than 100 meters. Otherwise, the radiation and the microphysics schemes may not function well. Large interpolation errors may also be introduced into the lateral boundary condition. We also need to make sure that vertical grid distance should be always smaller than horizontal grid interval. This is why for high resolution run, more vertical levels will be needed. 
if the model domain covers complex terrain area with high topography gradient, we need to specify a larger EPSSM value. This is to ensure the model integration is stable. EPSSM is a factor that affects the sound wave damping. A large value of EPSSM means a strong damping. Diffusion option 2 is also recommended to use in this situation. In older version of WORF, diffusion option 2 often leads to numerical instability. Since WORF version 3.6, diffusion option 2 and KM option 4 can be used together and the stability has been increased. This plot illustrates the diffusion options used in WORF. For diffusion option 2, the mixing is along the horizontal level, which is physically reasonable. For diffusion option 1, the mixing is along the model level. This is not correct. Now let's look at the selection of model physics, which is one important part in the model configuration. WORF provides many options of physical schemes. More options actually means more work. Before we determine what schemes we want to use, we need to at least <clears throat> understand these schemes first. We need to know the physical basis of the schemes, the possible problems they might have, and the conditions for correct application of the schemes. This requires extensive literature review. In the WORF users website, we provide information related to WORF physics. Please take a look when necessary. The model performance is often case dependent. One set of physics might perform better for a case, but the simulation might be less satis satisfactory for another case. This is why we suggest that one should test multiple options for the case that is interested. This slide gives some rules how to determine the physics option. For cumulus scheme, when the grid size is, is larger than 10 km, we do need to turn on cumulus parameterization scheme. When the grid interval is less than 4 km, we might turn off the cumulus scheme. The grid interval between 5 to 10 km is regarded as a gray zone. In this case, scale-aware cumulus scheme might be a better option. For microphysics physics scheme, when the grid interval is larger than 10 km, it is not necessary to turn on complex scheme. For grid intervals smaller than 4 km, a complicated scheme is necessary. This is because following the increase in model resolution, more details are needed for cloud microphysical processes. For PPL scheme, once the grid interval is larger than 500 meters, PBL should be turned on. For grid intervals smaller than 100 meters, large eye simulation should be applied. For grid intervals between 100 to 500 meters, either may work to a certain degree. Similar to the gray zone for cumulus scheme, this is the gray zone for PBL scheme. At this grid scale, the PBL assumption is violated due to convectively, convectively induced secondary circulations and the interactions between the secondary circulations and the small scale turbulence cannot be resolved. Now let's look at the importance of physics options in weather and climate simulations. 
I give an example of hurricane climate simulation for the year 2012. The 2012 Atlantic hurricane season was marked by above average tropical cyclone activity. In total, 19 tropical storms formed in that year, of which 10 became hurricanes. WORF was applied to simulate the hurricanes in 2012. All the simulations were initialized at May 1st and ended by the beginning of December. Grid interval is 12 km. Different physics options were used for these simulations. This slide shows the results. We can see that for some set of physics options, no tropical storm and hurricane could be reproduced by the model. The best simulation reproduced 18 out of the 19 tropical storms for the year 2012. In this simulation, the Cambridge Cumulus Scheme, the Thomson Microphysics, the RTMG TMG Radiation, and the YCU PBL Scheme were used. This is another example to show how physics options can affect the model results. This is the simulation of Hurricane Sandy. GFS, ECMWF, and WORF simulations were compared. Here we just look at the WORF simulation with TK and SAS cumulus schemes. With all the other conditions are the same, WORF simulation with the TK scheme gave a much better result than the simulation with the SARS scheme. For this case, it is obvious that cumulus parameterization is the dominant driver of the forecast track. The pool track forecast by the GFS and the WORF is largely attributed to the SARS cumulus scheme. Such kind of model results emphasize the importance of physical parameterization schemes in the modeling studies. Some other options that may be considered. The upper level damping, gravity wave drag, digital filter initialization, and the spectral nudging. These options will be introduced in the talk of WORF runtime options and WORF physics. I will not repeat here. Keep in mind that model results can be affected by many factors. WORF model does have limitations and cannot always give us expected results. What we can do is to configure the model as reasonable as possible and try to select those most appropriate op options for the case we are concerned. Um, I will stop here. Please feel free to ask any question. Thank you.